Hello everyone, hello YouTube. Today I will show you this piece over here. MST RMX 2.0 S. I will install an alloy parts. These two over here. These are alloy. Original on the car. They are coming plastic. So we will check. And this is the bag which has these ball bearings you need to build by yourself along with the grease these are the shims and the washers and the spacers and two bearings small as well and one long screw and the spring and the locker so first i'll show you the car itself my lovely body sylvia s14 s14 body 3d logos over here and everywhere in the front as well and this is the chassis itself here it is fully upgraded carbon fiber under chassis here so the carbon fiber plate better than plastic it will not bend it's a rear wheel drive so front wheels are spinning freely i'm using sanawa all of my elect electronics are Sanawa, Sanawa servo, Sanawa receiver, Sanawa remote, MT44. This is the remote I'm using, and the ESC as well. The ESC is over here. It's Sanawa Super Vortex Type D, and the Moxa motor is Luxon Agile 10.5 from Acuvans. I love it, it's a beast. Front A arms and this bulkhead over here which holds the A arms and the servo mounts, they are aluminum as well. And the servo horn, all the red parts from MST original. My issue is, last time when we went to track, I saw some people snap these. The driving cups on the MST RMX 2.0. They are plastic by factory. I know it's weird, but this is the situation we have in here. So I looked over the internet and I got this part, as I told you in the beginning of this video. Uh, before I start with the differential box removing, I noticed something. Last time I did the assembly for my Car, I did one mistake I want you guys to avoid which is this part the spacer this is spa spacer will go here under the hinge pins all right so returning referring to my manual I have the RTR version the RTR version is saying here this part at the rear of the car this part the plastic one should be one degree plus one it's written over here plus one under this part there is these spacers and silver colors and if you if you can see in the menu menu uh, menu we are not in restaurant in the manual it's saying plus one so the plastic part is plus one at the rear end and here is one millimeter so each spacer is 0 0.5 millimeter so if you can see in the front the spacers are zero millimeter at the back and the front of the car is 0 0.5 millimeter so one spacer under the front of the car no spacer at all in here this is the front of the car minus two degrees the plastic parts both ends and at the rear we have to use one millimeter so that means two spacers under the plastic hinge bends what i did <laughs> i put one spacer before here and the other one under this part which is wrong it should be both under this part over here so here we go guys as i told you Two spacers I just open it again and put it back to show you correctly how to 
do these spacers between the chassis and the hinge pins holder. I will put back the rear bumper right in place. Two screws holding the bumper, the rear one. First, we have to remove the spur gear. It's an easy job, guys, to take out the rear gearbox of your car. So let me put some light in here. You can see my sticker. The middle screw will take out. Just keep your screws on set place. You will get back to them easy and don't lose anything. So here is your spur gear out. There was a washer, don't use it, this washer. And there is a pen inside in here, you need to remove it as well. So I'll use something so small to hold it, I'm not using it. It falls by the way, it falls down if you hear that, here it is. The pen was inside. It's in here. Keep the wheel lock in here. Now I have to access to this gearbox with this screws. You need to remove this one and this one. And this one, this completely will remove your motor out of power. So I'm still still holding, which is this. Here you go. Out of the way. So now we are going to remove as well this screw. Here. Because don't forget the water side. There is a small washer in here. You can see that. So removing all the screws with their washers. One, two. They are. For your motor. The smaller one is here. And the long one is here. Don't mix that. They are not the same length. Now to remove this screw as well. It will, just, it will be the same as the long one. So these two long of this place. And from the bottom, we are going to use these four screws. Two, three, and four. Now, almost excluded, except for the part which is attaching here. This is attaching your motor. This part over here, you need to remove it. The shock tower attached direct to the gearbox. Two screws only. Like that, guys. Like that. Now, just keep this away. And you are good to go. Here it is. It's so lightweight, and I hear a sound inside, but let me open it and we will figure it out what's wrong with it. So remove this screw which was holding the motor. Just where is the spacer? Make sure you don't lose it. Here it is. The part, make sure you don't tighten this stuff. If you over tighten them, they will lose how they hold up. Okay, here we go. I am going to open the box. We need to lose one screw inside here. The screw which holds your, your bevel gear to the plate. A very long screw, but you need to take it out so you can open the gearbox easy. Like that, guys. The screw is here. This is the screw over here. And this is our gearbox. This is the little gear. And this is... This is the RMX 2.0 gearbox transmission inside. So the screw will be replaced to the right now. I'll say goodbye to it. So here it is, guys. The plastic one, even if it's misaligned from factory, I have to... After you remove the screw inside here, and the lock is going to just take it out apart. This is the plastic one. I will open it because I'll use my old gear back in. Or I'll try the new gear, but I have to change the pinion gear on it. So this gear must match the ratio that I must be showing. So these are the reduction gears. Figures you can use here. So with the kit, the RPR is coming 3617, which is too fast. 2.12. Final driving ratio is too fast for me. I prefer this one, 4211 or 4013. These are much better driving ratios in this car and we are drifting at the same speed. So after using two flat screwdrivers I removed this small pen and now I'm going to just take it out. This is the gear. Here it is. Always make sure you have the correct part which will hold your gear. There are two sides from MSP to hold this part to your gear shape. Okay and you will know which part will fit it. This is the long part it's coming in black color and there is a silver part which is shorter than this. They are so different. And good time also to check the bearings if they need to 
So I put them the fifteen direct in here. So what's the problem? It should come and hold and hold them in place. There we go. Like that. Position the part in this edge should come like this. So you have the new gear in place. Okay, guys. After that, make sure your gear once you move it, it's moving from the other side. That means the pin here down is attached. Don't forget to put back in your secret and put it back in here. Once you use the nose for this grip, just hold it from this side and this side and pinch it. Like that. Nice and perfect. Not going anywhere. Like that. Okay, guys. Once you have your gear in place, like that. Choose the old gear. I will use the 40 gear instead of the 42. Put it back in again if you, can see, if you want to change your setup back again. Hey guys, I've shared the menu here, the manual. I keep saying the menu. Thank you, Borat. The manual here is saying these are the bars, this nut. So we are going to compress the spring, and there is a washer. Before that, we will compress the spring, compress once, then attach. Then we will put all this assembly inside this part in here, and put this part first and build the ball. The big one will go in this, this hole, and we will put this grease, the ball, this is grease, the white one, and then we will put the bearings, washer. And then we will build the thrust bearings. We have to build the thrust bearings by ourselves. Okay, then finally the screw. And the shaft protector. At the end. Okay, guys, now this is going to be stupid. So, this skinny ball just here. So it's in here. Well, well, well. <laughs> Where is the bearing? It's inside. In here. So this part is the shim. And then, like that. Magic. So you will close it. Just like that. Well, guys, after figuring it out, <laughs> multi times, I hope I'm going to close this. Because, yes, so this bad boy over here with the noise and the screw don't over tighten. This is screw, as the manual says. The simple instruction says don't over tight. So once you reach 11, you already have the bearing in place. Now, if you over tighten, it will be harder to move it. If you completely tighten it down, it will be locked. So, I want it to be open a little bit. So, I'm going to lose that back, the screw back here. Like that. So, and it's not moving, it's not playing. That's why they put a spring in there. So, it's genius and it's smart. Okay, guys, I'm going to close this. Now I'm going to close this and then I'm going to close this. Like that. Okay, guys, I'm going to close this. Now 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 I'm going this is what I want. Nice and smooth. So let's put... I'm going to put this back in. I see it first. Does it need shimming? No. No shims are needed. Just in case, they put it for you. Here it is. Here it is, yes. Okay. Now let's put this back in. That is connected so quickly. <laughs> yes, time to tighten them down and place. First, I will start with the bottom screw. The four flat. Back in. There you go. Just make sure you align them on the right place. Here is it installed in this way. Can you see? Not so tight. I'm spinning freely. Yes. This is what I want, guys. The protectors are in, and the shafts will not, the pins will not damage this part here in the other because I'm going in my bar. I love to work. I love to work on the MSQs. They are so nice. 
Nice to drive, so nice to work on. How we ended up? Yes! <laughs> now the beast is screaming. This is what I want.